Initially introduced in 1936, the swordfish may at first seem an oddity, a plane more at home in the First World War than the world of all-metal monoplanes it found itself in. And yet, this bag of string and canvas would become one of the most legendary aircraft of the Second World War. The biplane design, while restricting the speed, gave it far more lift and allowed the plane to both take off in conditions that would have rendered many of its contemporaries grounded, but operate at very low speeds without stalling. And the simple metal frame and fabric construction meant that many shells sailed right through it, not exploding in the centre like they might have with a more armoured plane. The swordfish took part in many of the Royal Navy's most famous engagements, like the raid on Taranto, or, like the plane I am modelling today, the sinking of the battleship Bismarck. Our first port of call is the internal frame. I begin by removing the base plate and spraying aluminium before masking and spraying interior green across it and the frame walls. I then glue the parts together with super glue and paint some details, such as the instrument panel, in black. I then paint in the fabric parts, mixing a paint for it as I didn't have the appropriate shade to hand. Finally, I apply transfers, glue on a few odd parts, and set the frame to one side. frame assembled, I could then build the rest of the fuselage. I spray the interior with green, before painting the fabric panels with the same mix as before. I then clean up all the parts and glue them together with plastic cement, swapping to superglue for any painted components. After these were glued, there was large gaps left in the joints and I didn't need the primer to see this. As such, I fill this with plastic putty and once dry, sand it flat. I then continue to assemble parts, spraying components like the engine as I went, although in hindsight I would leave the engine off until after painting.
Now the various sub-assemblies were together, it was time to begin the painting in earnest. You'll notice I left the wings separate, and this is a very important step on biplane or triplane models, as your brush or airbrush will struggle to reach these areas. I start with a layer of primer, both to help the paint adhere, and also to allow me to check my earlier work with filling. I then clean up some of the seams of the file, and reprime these areas. After the primer had dried, I sprayed the base colours, beginning with Sky Type S across the whole plane, and then mask off the areas it would stay this colour, and spray on a dark green colour. Finally, I then mask off the areas it would stay green, and spray on the dark grey. After all this had dried, I removed the mask and painted some other details, such as the propeller and the wheels. Finally, once the paint was all done and dry, I sprayed gloss varnish across the whole plane.
Next, it was time to apply decals. While I'd been using the decals that came with the kit up to now, I'd actually bought a new set of insignia made by Extra Decal. This is because the boxing in the kit had come with decals for the Swordfish of the Channel Dash, but for me, Swordfish are first and foremost associated with the attack on the Bismarck. Regardless of the source though, I prepare all the decals the same, soaking them in warm water before transferring them to the plane and applying some decal solution after. Once I had applied the decals, I spray a layer of matte varnish to seal them in and provide a base for the weathering. The final stage of painting was to add a panel line wash. I mix this from black oil paint and thinner and paint it over the whole model before leaving it to dry for a day. Once dry, I wipe the excess with a sponge and some more thinner before sealing the result with another layer of matte varnish. While all of this dried, I also painted the torpedo, giving it a coat of a steel colour. Now it was time to do some weathering. I wanted to imitate the salt buildup that the aircraft would have from aircraft carrier operations. I wet the surface using some thinner before painting on the salt with white oil paint. I then use a flat brush to buffer this and fade it out, but not as much as I would with perhaps a fuel stain or some dirt, as I wanted this to remain obvious. Once it dried, I glued on the torpedo and then sprayed a final layer of matte varnish across all the parts. Now that everything was done, all that was left was to assemble the plane and install the bracing wires. I use a rigging diagram, which I've linked below, to help me place these, and use the same rigging I used for radio wires. This stage actually took me almost half the total build time, as it was an extremely fiddly job and bits kept going in the wrong place. Once glued in, I paint it using some steel colour paint, and the model is finished. <laughs> 